What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to a very special Top 15 episode. Um, these are going to be my favorite knives of all time. I have been working very hard on this list for months. It's been kind of an emotional roller coaster because certain knives got bumped up or down on the list, and there were a ton of knives that I was so sad that I, I couldn't put on this list. Um, I contemplated making it a top 20, but that would make the video too long. I contemplated a top 10 um, that I couldn't deal with that. Some of the knives that I had to kick off the list. So I decided on a top 15. Um, the reason it took so long is because like I said, there were certain knives I was like, could I really, you know, would I really pick this one over this one? And I kept having to switch them up and down the list, but I've gotten to the point where I'm confident with this list and I'm ready to show it to you guys. Keep in mind, this is based on my own personal preferences and biases. If you guys notice, I have two playlists on my channel, one that shows, um, well, I've got more than that, but but two important playlists, one that shows my, my favorite knives and one that shows my most recommended knives. The reason for two playlists is because there are definitely knives out there that I can recommend to um, the common man who's interested in, in really good folding knives, but that I don't really like a whole lot for myself, um, like the Benchmade Bugout or the Spider Codelica. Completely recommendable knives, I just don't really like them. So I have a separate list for knives that I like and that are my favorite knives for reasons completely beyond utility and just because I like them. So this list is actually um, compiled of, of both of those things. My love for a utilitarian design and just because it has things that I like that are just biases and personal preferences. So a lot of this is based on opinion. If your favorite knife is not on this list, I'm sorry, this is just based on my, my own personal likes. Um, so don't, you know, don't get too upset. And on top of that, uh, the list is subject to change. I will, I will probably do an updated version of this, um, at some point with this list, you're going to get certain things with each knife. I'm going to explain why I love it. Um, I'm going to explain why it's not higher on the list. Um, and then I'm going to explain which variant I would choose. Cause a lot of these knives have multiple variants. Um, and then if I don't own the knife, I'm going to explain why I don't own it. Um, there's a, another video that I did top 10 knives that I regret selling. Um, that kind of explains, you know, there, there are definitely knives that I don't own that I am, am that I am regretting having sold. Um, so some of the knives on this list, I'm, I don't own. And for that reason, it's going to, you know, the iPad is going to play a, a role in this video, which is going to make it a little bit awkward transitionally, but I think I've got it figured out. Um, by the way, real quick, I am currently at 46 patrons and I made a new goal of 50. The moment that we hit 50 patrons, I will open up a giveaway for this beautiful USA made blade exclusive red G10 Southern grind spider monkey. This will be a giveaway that's open for everybody to enter and it'll be free to enter. Um, I just have to hit 50 patrons first. So if you're interested in becoming a patron and helping me re reach that goal, follow the link in the description and check out my patron. You can join any tier. Also, once we hit 60, I'll be giving away the drop pro tech, um, uh, Mordax. This is a button lock flipper, beautiful knife. It was one of the original giveaway knives, and uh, my buddy Jeff, who it, it actually belongs to, said, you know what, go ahead and give that away. Those are brand new knives. They'll come with all their packaging. They're awesome. Hope you guys are excited about that. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the list here. I mean, make sure off camera here that my iPad is ready to go. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as smooth as possible so you guys don't have to wait. Number 15 is going to be... The Spyderco PM2. I'm sure a lot of you are not shocked that this knife made my list. You're probably shocked that it's all the way at the bottom. Um, here's what I love about the PM2. It is one of the most utilitarian designs out there. As far as a folding knife goes, it is super easy to manipulate no matter what you like, uh, what style you like in terms of deploying your knife. Um, awesome. It's also got the compression lock, which I've grown to love. Um, great ergonomics, just amazing. What I don't like about this knife, the reason it's not higher on the list is because it's got a super weird look to it. God, this knife is so weird and it has the longest handle. Bizarre. Some people really love it. Um, I actually had to change some things. You know, the original scales were really blocky, so I have these rounded off aftermarket scales that I really like. And I also had to change the pocket clip to something um, that I that I like. Now, I still don't really like the aesthetic of this. It's a little bit prettier. It's a little bit, you know, more something that I can uh, visually enjoy. But the overall look of it, the fact that it looks like a wounded pelican when it's deployed is something that does not please me over some of the other knives on this list. But I had to include it. I had to. I've gotten a lot of great use out of this. Uh, number two, this is actually going to be the very first knife, or not number two, number 14. Sorry, <laughs> have to make sure I count correctly. Have to make sure that I um, transition this correctly. So the just so you know, the um, 
the rat is not number 14. It's uh, the poor thing is actually going to be used to hold up the iPad. So um, number 14 is actually going to be the Benchmade Super Freak. And this is the version of the Freak. We'll have to turn the light on and off. This is the version of the Freak that comes in CPM M4 um, and has the uh, layered black and gray G10 scales. Um, in my opinion, honestly, this is the best knife that um, Benchmade makes right now. Um, the Benchmade Griptilian was a great knife, but I'll explain a little bit later while the Griptilian itself is not on the list. Um, that blade is awesome. The G10 scales are awesome. There's some slight contouring, slight texturing. The look of it, are you serious? We're going to turn off right in the middle of the video there. Sorry about that. Um, the look of it is just stunning. I love it. Um, the only thing really holding it back is how big it is. Um, I'm also not a really big fan of the position of the thumb stud. I understand why it's there. It's really easy to deploy, um, but it's in the cutting path. And this is a really big knife and it kind of limits you on the cutting path a little bit. It is, it's still an exceptional design and it's one of the best priced knives in Benchmade's line. It's still expensive at $195, but I mean, honestly, I, I think that's Benchmade's best knife right now. So it's definitely gonna make the list. Uh, moving on here, and actually the next one is also going to be on the iPad. So we're gonna <laughs> transitionally, uh, awkwardly transition into it. Next one on the list is gonna be the Fantoni HB01. This knife has showed up on another list. Sorry about the glare there. This knife has showed up on another list on my channel before. I used to own this thing. This is made, uh, it's a, collabor a collaboration between Fantoni knives and is it, I think it's Bill Harzi. Um, there's three of these, the HBO one, HBO two and HBO three, small, medium and large. The HBO one is the big one, about nine and a quarter inches. This has a very straightforward design, it has a little micro flipper tab that doesn't do a whole lot, but it's got an amazing design, titanium liner lock, a beautiful spear point blade of S35 VN. I think the newer ones are actually an M390 now. Um, this knife is about 280 bucks. It's not a bad price for it. The only thing holding this knife back is it has a flipper tab that doesn't really do a whole lot and um, it's gigantic. Um, I probably would like the medium one more had I have I uh, had I handled it at all, um, but um, I, uh, I, I haven't handled it. This is the only one. Um, the reason that I don't own this knife anymore is because I traded it. I think I, um, or actually I sold it and used the money to buy one of my other 22 hinderer knives. Um, so that's just, that's just what happened there. Um, now, uh, I didn't explain why I don't own the, um, the Super Freak. Um, I, I will own the Super Freak. Um, it, I just haven't gotten around to it and you know, funds need to be present for that. So moving on here to number third, number 12, I'm having to read this in the dark. Sorry about that. Number 12 is the ZT0393. In my opinion, one of the very best knives that has ever graced the ZT lineup. This is based on the Rick Hinder Eclipse. Um, it's also, the blade is a Harpoon Spanto. Um, this is just an incredible knife, has bearings. Um, it's got a titanium liner lock that really is a frame lock. It's got that Hinderer feel, that Hinderer look. It's even got parts that are modular uh, between this knife and Hinderer parts. So like you can actually take the Torx head pivot out of this and put it in an XM18, or you could take the flat head pivot out of the XM18 and put it in this. It also utilizes the filler tab and the pocket clip. This is an awesome knife functionally. Truthfully, one of the only things that's holding this knife back a little bit is the overlays. The overlays are weird. Um, these should be shadow boxed and this, this section should be filled in. It's, it's based on what he was doing with the Maximus or what he currently is doing with the Maximus. Um, I just don't like it. Um, the version of this that I would, um, that I would purchase given that there are multiple variants, is probably the one you're seeing right in front of you. It's the Stonewash variant. I kind of wish that it was in 20 CV, but then again, as far as a user goes, the S35VN that the uh, 0393 SW comes in is probably a better choice. I, I really, really love this knife. Um, I don't own it because I just, it's kind of like the, um, the Super Freak. I just haven't really gotten around to buying it yet. I'm running out of time because these just aren't really available anymore. I think the only one that's currently available at the time of this video is the GLCF, which is not not one that I personally am interested in. That the one that I've shown here recently on my channel was actually um, it, it belongs to my buddy David. Let's go ahead and turn this light back on and move this because the next knife on the list is one that I've got here physically. Let me move this guy out of the way. The best the next knife on the list, number eleven, is going to be the Hogritter RSK MK1 G2, aka the perfect Griptilian. Um, 
Hogue and Doug Ritter make this knife now. Um, Hogue, or I'm sorry, Ritter, uh, Doug Ritter used to work with Benchmade and make a special version of the Griptilian that was the same plastic handles and then had this blade. Um, then they stopped doing that or they cut the contract with him and now he does this with Hogue and uses the Able Lock. This is essentially a bench, Benchmade Griptilian and it's the reason that the Benchmade Griptilian itself is not actually on the list. Its design is here in spirit. So if you have a Benchmade Griptilian and you love it, understand that I'm, I'm really saying that the Benchmade Griptilian has such an amazing design um, that it has taken its ultimate form in this knife. So you could technically count the Benchmade Griptilian in number 11 here with the RSK MK1 G2. Contoured G10 scales in an amazing texture pattern. Um, flawless um, action. Fit and finish is great. Stonewash looks amazing. And ama one of the best blade grinds for EDC tasks that exists. And it's in M390. The best thing about it is... It runs 150 bucks. That is, this is, to this day, this is the point of diminishing returns to me. This is where you start losing, um, you know, utilitarian benefit for every dollar spent. This is the line. You honestly could buy this and probably never need anything else. So why isn't it higher on the list? Um, it's the fact that it utilizes a an axis lock style locking mechanism. It's got Omega Springs in there and they technically, while they probably won't, they could fail and that could leave me with a knife that doesn't work unless I jam a stick in there um, and until I send it back for warranty. And given whatever situation I'm in, it might not be super convenient to do that. Um, so I love this knife. It's definitely on my list, um, but that's why it's not higher. Um, moving on here to number 10, another knife that I physically own and you guys won't be surprised by this. The Spyderco Manix 2. As you can see, this knife has been thoroughly loved. Um, I really like the Manix 2. Uh, it's got an incredible ergonomic design. It's got an amazing uh, locking system. The blade is ground to near perfection. Um, it's super easy to deploy. I just love this knife. You know, it's just the right size for me. The reason it's not higher on the list is because I actually had to change a few things to make it perfect. Um, I changed the scales because the peel ply texturing is not, let me turn the autofocus off. The peel ply texturing for me on this knife was not ideal. Um, I also did not like the plastic cage, never have. Had to upgrade it to the flitanium cage, which I really, really, which I really, really love. Also, I had to add a, uh, an MXG deep carry clip. The Spyderco clip used to be one of my favorite clips, but I just found it awkward in uh, usage, usage situations. It was really digging into my hand a little bit much, and I just, you know, I just didn't like it. The um, While this lock is great, it, it makes it just a little bit more awkward to use than um, like a compression lock or a frame lock or a liner lock. I still really, really love it. This is one of the most dependable knives out there. It's just to make it perfect in my eyes, I had to spend some extra money. Um, that's why it's not uh, higher on the list. Um, which variants I would own? Oh, gosh. If they ever make one in G10 and Maximate, I will definitely own that knife. But as of right now, the plain S30V and G10 one is um, probably the way I would go. The 20CV um, uh, variant that was offered by um, DLT Trading was also a good knife, definitely. Um, number nine. Um, this is a knife that a, not a lot of people probably would expect would be on my list, um, but it definitely is. And I've brought this up on many um, reviews where I've reviewed different uh, variances of it. Uh, the Spyderco Para 3. This is the smallest knife that I have an absolute love for. Uh, there's no other knife that's this size, seven and a quarter inches that I love. And here's the reason. I can get my whole hand around it. It's just as easy, if not even more easy to manipulate than the Para 3. But I actually like how this one looks. I mean, it's still, it, just, it still kind of looks like a wounded pelican. Um, but I, I like it. You know, the handle's not quite as long and weird. And it's um, a, a compact design that uh, is easy to carry if you're wearing like lighter shorts or something. Um, I really, really like it. What I don't like about it is the stock position for the pocket clip. That's a common complaint. I had to upgrade it with the MXG deep carry clip, just like my other spider codes. But other than that, that's about it. I mean, um, you got to spend a little bit of money to make it perfect, but it, it really is awesome. I, I love this knife. Um, and uh, my, my wife got me this version in um, uh, Maximit, and uh, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it. There is no other version of the Para 3 that I would want more than this one. I had been seeking a G10 and Maximit knife for a long time, didn't know that this existed, and my wife surprised me with it. So I have... The, in my eyes, the very perfect um, pair of three. Okay, moving on here, let's go ahead and bring the poor rat back as the uh, uh, prop up for the iPad. 
Uh, moving on here to number eight. This might come as a surprise for a lot of people. Let's go ahead and put this down. And then I'm going to turn off the light so we can move on here. The Ferrum Forge Archbishop Archbishop 2.0, and specifically the contoured uh, version. They come in bronze, blue, and tumbled titanium. Um, this knife is amazing, and it really caught me off guard. It's got it's it's eight inches overall, has an amazing blade grind. It's got a forward choil. It's got incredible flipping action. Titanium scales are contoured. It's got a nice gear pattern titanium backspacer. It's got functional jimping. It's got excellent ergonomics. This thing is amazing. It is such a good knife. Um, I, you know, really there's not a whole lot holding me back um, with this knife. I wish that it was made, I, I don't believe this variant is made in the USA. Um, is it made by Wii or Re? I can't remember who, who collaborated with Ferrum Forge. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but one of the only things holding this knife back um, is uh, the the fact that there's no texturing on the titanium. You guys know that I really, really like texturing on the titanium, and I'm sure you want to tell me, there is a version of this with texturing on the titanium. It's got fish scales. Yeah, but that version's not contoured. So I have to get one or the other. I want them both. I want it to be contoured and have texturing. This knife would be darn near perfect if that were the case. Um, I, you know, I like the look of this long... Um, you know, thumb hole up there, but if it were a little bit shorter, I might like it a little better. I'm nitpicking. I'm being hard on this knife, but this knife really, truly caught me off guard. It, it's one of the most perfect knives uh, that are out there right now. Um, sorry. Uh, oh, the reason that I don't own it right now is because that version is um, sold out, unfortunately. So I can't own it right now, and I'm not willing to go hunt one down on the secondary market yet, but at some point, I will probably own that knife for myself. Um, moving on here to number seven, I don't think this will surprise anybody. Um, the Chris Reeve Large and Cozy. I owned this exact version, and it is, again, darn near perfect. Um, we have a beautiful blade shape. One of the prettiest stone washes that exists is, is offered by Chris Reeve Knives. Um, I like these versions with the micarta inlays. Unfortunately, it makes the knife really expensive. It's like $550 up from the $450 base price, um, but... It was worth it to me just to have some some flair on the uh, handle scale. I love the um, functional design. This is a straightforward workhorse of a knife. A lot of people think that these are like delicate gentleman's folders. No, they have convex grinds. These are li literally, Sabenza means work and Inkosi I think means chief. These knives are designed to be put through the ringer. They're designed to be used really hard. This one has the ceramic ball lock face. Um, it's uh, uh, got the adjustable pivot. Um, it's got an incredibly simple construction. I mean, it's just really great all the way around. Honestly, here's what's holding the knife back for me. Fidget factor. These things are designed to be open slowly. They're not really flickable knives. Yeah, I know that you can adjust it and make it flickable, but it doesn't really have that like clicky frame, frame lock feel, you know, that snappy action that we get from a lot of these more modern folding knives. It's an amazing knife. Um, that's really all that's holding it back. Uh, the next knife on the list is actually, again, one that um, I own. So if I can turn this light back on, and it's fighting me. There we go. We'll move the iPad out of the way once again. I knew this was going to be an awkward video, but I had to put these in this order, and I had to deal with the fact that I don't own all of these. Um, this is a knife you guys have seen here recently. Number six, the Beg Knives Steelcraft Series Bodega. Uh, again, a knife that is almost perfect. This knife was a um, candidate for what I call Excalibur, uh, meaning it had almost every last little nitpicky tiny thing that I want in a knife to be able to call it perfect. I love the look of this knife. I love the ergonomics. I love the fact that the scales are textured titanium on this and tumbled. Um, the action is just unreal. It's got a ceramic detent ball and a, cer a ceramic bearing setup. It's in CPM S35VN. Honestly, the level of um, quality that I'm getting here with this knife, it it's amazing that this knife only costs $375. If you're confused by that because it sounds like a lot of money, trust me, you're just going to have to handle it. This thing is something to behold. It's wild. Um, what's holding it back? I really wish the blade was tumbled. I really wish that wish that the handle scales um, had um, you know some uh, reflectivity to them, um, and I wish that they offered the same ice finish that they offer on the mini for like the pocket clip and the backspacer. That would have really made this knife just about perfect. And ta-da, you can reverse flick it, so that's super cool. 
really, really like this knife. Moving on to number five, we're getting into the really serious part of this list. Um, just know that like everything that's on this list from number um, 15 to six probably could go in any order. Like if I, if I kept putting this off, my list would just keep changing order. But as far as my top five, these are solid. Uh, I am 100% certain of my very top five. Um, it, it was it was difficult to create the list in the order in its entirety, but um, in terms of the difference between number five and number six, we are officially on like the, the serious level of this list. Absolutely. So this is another one that I don't, un um, for unfortunately, that I don't own out of stupidity uh, because it's actually appeared on this channel before and it was mine, um, but is no longer. So anyways, let's go ahead and turn this light back off and introduce number five, the ZT0562. I have owned four different variants of this knife and for whatever reason, I keep letting them go. This knife, it was originally um, the, uh, it was one of the original ca collaborations between Rick Hinder and Zero Tolerance. Everybody knows about this knife. Everybody loves this knife. Not everybody, but a lot of people do. You can get this in um, standard S35VN for 200. You can get it in carbon fiber for 260. And for 280, you can get this full titanium version. I had been waiting on this titanium version forever. And then I got it and I was like, okay, I guess I'll sell it and get some. That was dumb. I will get this knife back. This knife is fantastic. It has, I think this knife set the stage for like excellent flipping action. This is one of the best flippers out there, even today. And I, I honestly think that a lot of knife companies that started to figure it out during the times where like flipping action and detent just was kind of screwed up with a lot of companies, they looked to the 0562. This thing set the bar and it's, st it's still way up there. It has an amazing, amazing design. So what's holding it back? It's almost as good as the real XM18. I really wish that this knife had some different um, blade shapes. Uh, I really wish it had a forward choil. And obviously I wish that it had contoured titanium scales that were textured. Um, so I'm sure you guys are asking like the bag has like all of that. So wh what's the difference there? Um, this knife is offered in M390 and despite me liking S35VN more than M390 or it's actually 20CV from a user standpoint, um, it, it's just something that kind of, um, tops this knife off for me. Um, what are we doing here? Sorry about that. Um, so it, it's just, I, I really like that considering it's a $280 knife, even though it's less expensive. And that's another thing. It's less expensive than the bag. Um, it's also made in the United States and I just, I like it. Like to me, this is like all of ZT. This is like their perfect folding knife, their very best folding knife, or it's one of them, um, all wrapped into one thing. And it, it really represents like, I, I think ZT as a company really, really well. Um, so I love that knife. Um, and uh, the reason that I don't own it is, like I said, I was dumb um, and sold it to pay for something else, likely another real hinder, and I, I will get that knife back. Um, it's just an amazing package. Um, moving on here, another knife that I no longer own out of stupidity, Number, let's see, let me make sure here. Oh no, I'm wrong. Number four I do own. Sorry, I'm looking at this list in the dark, guys. And you're thinking like, you don't know, you should know, you put so much effort into it. Yeah, but uh, doing this episode like this is really like jumbling me up. So I still have to look and read. Number four, not gonna come as a surprise to anybody, the Spyderco Shaman. Um, definitely one of the very best knives that exists right now. This knife has probably the best ergonomics out there. Uh, I mean, I love how this thing melts into my hand. This feels like it was made for my hand. I reference this all the time, but when I unboxed this, it blew my mind. That episode is still there. If you want to go watch me unbox for this for the first time, it's on my unboxing playlist. It, it shocked me. I love the shape and style of the blade. It's robust and feels heavy duty, but it still has an amazing cutting edge. And this choke, this forward joil is just perfect. I love it contoured scales, it's got the compression lock, it's got a good look, but it, I mean, it, it, it carries well, but it's, it's big and it makes me feel capable. A lot of people don't like that there's a nub that comes flying through there and you have to move your fingers out of the way. Um, I've gotten to the point where I just don't even notice that. In fact, the other day I read about that and I was like, oh yeah, that was a thing with this knife. Like people didn't like that. And I have completely forgotten about it. It's just not a problem. Um, this is one of the most perfect knives that exists. So what's holding me back? This knife, I, I really want to see Flytanium make some skills for this. I made a comment about that on Instagram. Like, haha, I kind of, hey, Flytanium, would you guys, you know, think about making some titanium scales and, and maybe some brass and copper? And all they said was, 
eh, yeah, brass and copper would make it really heavy. And then I, I was left there thinking like, so maybe? <laughs> I really want some titanium scales for this, really badly. I want some titanium contoured scales and I would send them off to have them textured by Fanatic Edge. I would definitely do that. At that point, this knife would literally be perfect. It's got everything else that I want. It's just not all titanium. Um, that's it. Um, moving on here, the next two knives are both knives that I no longer own um, because I'm stupid. So once again, we'll be moving this knife off the table. We'll be bringing out the poor rat and we'll be turning off this light. Um, so number three is going, no, I'm not advertising for Monkey Edge. This is just the best picture I could find of it without there being a glare. Um, this is the Les George VECP version three. Uh, this is one of the most perfect knives on the planet in terms of it, functional design and aesthetics. It is so, so beautiful to me. I love this blade shape. Um, I love the stone wash that he applies to this. I, they have a glassy smoothness about them. Not, not just in the pivot, I mean to the touch. Literally, the blade and scales feel different on these knives than other titanium knives that I've handled. I don't know what he's doing. It's some kind of crazy polish, maybe before he or after he applies the stone wash. I don't know. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is such a premium feeling knife. Um, I love the simplicity of the pivot, the handle shape, and specifically this monkey edge frag pattern where they divide this line here and make kind of a faux bolster. Oh, it's beautiful. Plus, you've got an option for either standoffs or a backspacer. Um, I would opt for the gear pattern backspacer. And then the pocket clip is a very Benchmade style um, pocket clip or Emerson style clip that kind of holds the knife in that exactly that right spot between deep carry and shallow carry. And it looks nice. And there are steel flame clips available and other custom pocket clips. And it kind of has some of that make it your own element that Hinder Knives has. Um, it's just, it's amazing. Um, so what's holding this knife back from being higher on the list in the number two or number one position? Um, you only have um, the thumb stud option and it, it's kind of difficult to deploy with the rear finger. So it's really just a thumb deployer. It's on phosphor bronze, which makes it a true, you know, like hard use style knife because you're not going to get gunk in there. But it doesn't really, it's, it's, a, it's better than the Sebenza and the Inkosi um, in terms of the action and flickability, but it's not quite like you know, it doesn't feel like a ZT0562. It's not like, bam, it just, you know, and that's the nature of the phosphor bronze, you know? And so that's kind of unfair because this knife really is a half step from perfection in my eyes. Um, it's it's really great. Um, that's the only thing really holding it back there. Why don't I own this? I used to own one that was all stone washed and no frag and I sold it be probably to buy another hinderer. That's most of, most of the reasons that I don't own these knives anymore is I sold it to buy another hinderer. That's, that's what I did. Um, so uh, I'll tell you though, if I did get an opportunity to buy one of these for the right price with a monkey edge frag pattern that was completely unused, somebody hadn't put their own edge on it. It was brand new out of the box and perfect. I would buy it. Um, but, uh, that, that opportunity has not presented itself. These frag versions are pretty rare. Moving on here to number two, another knife that I don't own. And this is a very frustrating knife for me. A lot of you know the story on this guy. Um, sorry about the awkwardness uh, position that picture. This is the ZT0392. Um, aside from the 0562, my opinion is, is that the 0392 series uh, ZTs are the very best folding knives that ZT has ever offered. If you're not familiar with these knives, these were factory custom knives that ran about $390 when they were available. They come in a lot of different colors um, and setups. They actually, they, they use, this is a ZT Hinderer collaboration. They actually use legitimate Rick Hinderer hardware. The pivot, the screws, um, the filler tabs, the pocket clips. It's actually got the same standoff and screw setup as an actual Rick Hinderer Eclipse, which you can see is the body design. And they have a few, uh, they've got a unique blade shape. This was actually an old custom grind that Rick did. Um, he doesn't do it in his production knives. They also had um, Warncliffs and they had two different Warncliffe designs that were a little bit more aggressive than the standard Warncliffe offered by Rick Hinder. And then they also had a Bowie, which was amazing. Um, I would take any of them in perfect condition, but this is really the one that I want. Um, and um, people are like, why are they so expensive? Uh, listen, as far as like a knife like this goes, this is basically a full titanium Hinder XM18, which you guys know runs at base. A three and a half inch um, is going to run $625. Basically, you're going to pay an extra $200 for the titanium scale. So the fact that you could get a factory custom ZT that was basically a hinderer. I mean, 
this thing was basically a hinder. Um, and at the time, you could get it on bearings and a steel lock bar insert, which was not something that you could get on the actual Hinder XM18. Plus, it was full titanium. So this was a steel. It might sound really, really expensive, but this was a steel at 390 bucks. Nowadays, eh, you're going to pay 550 bucks. And in my experience, here's what I found out. Uh, people lie about these things all the time. They're like, yeah, 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 they're in perfect condition. There's no issues whatsoever. And then you get them and you find out the reason they're selling it is there's an issue with it or they've been using it. My experience was I waited forever to find one of these. I finally found one. I asked the gentleman, is there detent lash? I really hate it when the blade wiggles around or clicks in the closed position. And he said, no. And I said, can you shake it? And there's no rattle. And he said, no, absolutely not. And I get it. And it's one of the worst cases of detent lash. It was just a coincidence. It was one of the worst cases of detent lash that I have ever felt in my life. And by the way, buddy, if you're watching this video and you remember that, yeah, I'm that guy that messaged you back and said, dude, you said there was no detent lash. Anyways, he wouldn't let, I'm not going to say his name, but he wouldn't let me give, sell it back. So I had to resell this knife, take a huge loss on it because I had to be honest about it. I had to say, hey, this knife has detent lash. It's perfect other than that. But anyways, this is the one that got away. If I get another opportunity in the future, I might do it, but I'm a little bit wary. Um, but you know, the only thing that's really holding this knife back from being perfect is, again, it's not contoured and it's not, uh, doesn't have the titanium scales, uh, or I'm sorry, it doesn't have the, um, the textured scales. Um, and the blade shape, you know, I like it, but I, I wish it was something different. I wish I had an option. You know, you can only get certain colors of these with certain blade shapes. I'm also not a huge fan of the two-tone on it. I love everything else, the green anno, it's got the flare, not a fan of the two-tone. If I could have it my way, um, I'll keep the black uh, scale, make it contoured, make it textured. I'll keep the green hardware. Um, I don't want the satin finish on the blade. I want um, a, a tumbled finish and I don't want the two-tone. But this is the most amazing ZT knife that exists in my opinion. Um, it's just good luck finding one for anything less than like, you know, 550 bucks. Okay, moving on to number one here. I'm sure, you know, most of you guys are going to we know what one number one is, and you're right, you do, you know what it is, because I've talked about it here um, recently. Let me go ahead and turn the light back on. Let's go ahead and finish this up for people who don't know um, what my number one favorite knife is of all time. And let me tell you something, it's by quite a bit, especially after my most recent acquisition. Um, this is um, number 22 for me, the Rick Hinder, <laughs> had my finger on the lock bar there. Oh, built up all that drama and I couldn't do the reverse flick. The Rick Hinder XM18 3.5 inch Generation 6. Um, this is just for anybody who doesn't know. I, I've been a fan of Hinder XM18s for a long time. I have owned 22 different Hinder knives. I don't own them all anymore. I've had to sell, I mean, I'm not rich. I had to keep selling them and, to, and a lot of times taking losses to be able to buy the next one. Um, this newest generation with um, Hinder XM18 allows the user to switch out the pivot with bearings, phosphor bronze or nylon, which it comes with, making this incredibly versatile in terms of the pivot. Um, the uh, the knives come in a massive variety, probably more variety than any other model that exists on the planet in terms of blade shapes, blade finishes, handle materials, um, handle texturing, hardware materials, hardware um, uh, colors, hardware materials, literally almost anything you can imagine with a Rick Hinder knife you can get. In this case, what you're looking at here is a standard, oh, by the way, they come in a lot of different blade steels too. Um, this is a stonewash finish spear point blade, probably the most boring blade the Rick Hinder offers. It has a choil, it does not have a flipper tab. If you don't know, you might find, find yourself asking, can I get it without the choil? Can I get it with the flipper tab? Yeah, they make those, they do. Um, this one's in 20 CV, there's also um, M390, which is the same thing, S35VN, I've seen 3V, I've seen 01 tool steel, probably some other stuff. Um, this monochromatic setup is beautiful to me. I have opted for an extra $200 titanium scale on the front, which to me just makes this knife perfect. Literally the only, th I've said this before, the only thing holding this knife back, I'm having a lot of trouble deploying this one on camera today. The only thing holding this knife back from absolute perfection is the fact that the scales are not contoured. If the scales were contoured, we would have an absolutely perfect knife here by my standards. In, in my opinion, currently, you know, this is a generation six. Um, so if you're looking for Gen 6, by the way, you're looking for that little symbol right there. That means triway. These come, these start at 425. They go up to 625 if you're finding them with titanium skills. They do go beyond that. But um, anyways, uh, what was I going to say? 
<laughs> I talk about hinder knives and I lose my train of thought. In this particular setup, what I've realized is the fact that there is no flipper tab actually makes this slightly more ergonomic and gives me better access to the choil, which I prefer. If you don't care about the choil, then you and you like flipper tabs, then get one of those, um, you know, those uh, no choil uh, flippers uh, because you're going to enjoy that extra blade length. I like the ability to chuck, uh, choke up here. I also like the ability to deploy the knife with a thumb stud, and I definitely like to do my reverse flicks, so this knife allows me to do that. Um, like I said, it's got bearings in it. It's got a steel lock bar insert. It's got an over travel stop here and here. Um, it uses the thumb studs as the um, external stop pin, um, which makes it um, a little bit better if you're going to do some digging and prying in terms of where the force is, is mitigated away from the pivot. Um, it's also got a pillar construction set up with some nice beefy standoffs. Everything is just beautiful. The pocket clip is mountable and tip up or tip down, and they make scales for left and right hand carry. Basically, Rick Hinder has done his best to cater to every single person, no matter their carry preference, their taste and aesthetics or utility. This is simply, in my opinion, the very best folding knife that exists on the planet. And that's taking into consideration, again, my own personal bias, uh, my own preferences in aesthetics, and my own idea of what constitutes uh, perfect in terms of utility. You do not have to agree with me, but that's, that's how I've arrived at this point. Like I said, in the future, certain knives may bump other knives off of this list and certain positions. But I'll tell you this, it's going to take quite a knife to, re to remove this guy from my number one spot, specifically this version. I think that the XM18 three and a half inch, and by the way, what's also, you know, people who want to say, it's too thick behind the edge. Nah, that's not an issue anymore. These things are, are ground um, really well behind the edge and they offer skinny versions and fatty versions. So if you like your blades thicker or thinner and in a different shape, you have that option. The only thing really to complain about anymore with these knives is like I've always said, the price, if you can't afford it, I completely understand. And some people don't like um, the spanner side of this pivot. They call that a proprietary system. N no, you can get a spanner tool and undo these. You can use a coin in the pivot setup. And somebody else mentioned, you know, that looks um, outdated and ugly on the pivot because it's a flathead. Like I said, you can take the pivot out of an 0393, which is a um, Torx head, and you can put it in an XM18 if you want that Torx head look. They also are available in different finishes and things like that. You can find them pretty easily on eBay. There's very little to complain about anymore with these knives, you know, unless you just don't like Hinder knives. You don't have to agree with me, but if you're going to complain about things, if you like how they look and you're going to, and, and you want to, you know, complain about other things, there's very little to complain about unless you just don't like the design. But um, it's going to take a lot to pull this out of my number one spot. But hopefully, and I say that, I, I mean that, hopefully an, a design does come along that's better. Or Rick Hinder's like, you know what, I'm going to start contouring my, <laughs> my knives. I would just die. Um, but, uh, you know, that's going to be pretty much it for this list, guys. This was a super long video. It was... Um, as you can imagine, I've actually attempted to record it multiple times. It's really hard to get through all of this with no cuts. There's only There was only one cut in this video, and that's because my phone only allows me to record for so long on 60 frames per second. Um, so I made it through with just one cut. Um, sorry for the awkwardness. Sorry for the clumsiness in the video. But I hope this was, um, at the very least, mildly entertaining. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.